man, it's pretty out here. I mean, I can see bush, you can see hills and the city behind me. It's really nice to just kind of sit down and relax in this sort of environment and just chill. And yeah, you know, I've been thinking a lot about this story um, of Moses. And Moses and Israel had just come out of Egypt and they arrive at the base of a mountain. And God actually comes down and he settles on the top of this mountain. And so Moses goes up, and you can find this from Exodus 19 to 34. He goes up to the mountain to meet with God. And for 40 days, he's up there. And there's a whole lot of things happening. But essentially, Moses goes up to meet God, and it's the establishment of Israel as God's people. And Moses has this really significant encounter with God right at the end in Exodus 34. God says, I'm going to show myself to you, but I'm actually, it's gonna, I'm too powerful for you to see my face. So I want you to go and hide behind a rock and I'm going to pass by. And as I pass by, you can look at my back and see my back. And so this happens and there's thunder and there's lightning and the ground shakes. And as God passes by, Moses peeks out from behind this rock on this mountain and sees the back of God. And after this happens, they form a relationship between Israel and God. And Moses walks down that mountain. And what he doesn't know is that from that one encounter, his face is shining. And everyone can see a shining face just from that one encounter. And I've been thinking a lot about encounter, been thinking a lot about that story for Moses. And I'm fascinated by it because it seems to me that every time that someone encounters God, it's, it's life changing. Whether it's a physical change like Moses had whether it's a historical change where God goes from having a relationship with a family to having a relationship with a whole nation. There's a life-changing element to encountering God. And it's not the last time that God encounters people on a mountain. You know, Jesus does the famous Sermon in the Mount. Uh, the feeding of the 5,000 is most likely on a mountain or a hill. It's not the last time God encounters on a mountain. I just, encounter strikes me as interesting. And I'm reminded of a passage in Mark 5 where Jesus is walking through a crowd and a lady goes to touch his cloak who's been bleeding for 12 years. And as she touches his cloak, she is healed. And Jesus cannot stand the idea that this lady is healed, but never sees his face. And so he searches for her. He turns around and he starts looking for her. And when he finds her, he not only says that she is healed, but also that her sins are forgiven. And there's something interesting about encounter where God wants to show the fullness of who he is. He wants to draw us into that relationship so that it's not only slightly life-changing, it's not only about his power, but he draws into our relationship with him. And we need to see him and understand his fullness. Now, we know that we are fully saved in salvation. We know we have an encounter with God in some way or some form in salvation. But I actually often think that either through fear or through a misunderstanding of God, that we limit how we encounter Him. We often make an excuse of, I feel God best when I do this. And so I always do this. Yet God is more than just that one thing. He's more than just worshiping with music. He's more than just the knowledge you get from reading scripture. There is a fullness to God that is really important. 
And it's God who wants to encounter us fully and relationally. But I think also sometimes we fear the change. That it's far scarier to encounter Him and to change than to stay the same. And I think we limit where we can do it, whether it's on a mountain, whether it's in our room. And so I guess the challenge is how and where you encounter Jesus. What do you want to do with that encounter? Because we can actually fake encounter. And the more we limit where God can encounter us, the more we can fake it. Say we've had an encounter, but our life doesn't change. But the, really, the important truth here is this. There is a difference in how God encounters us now. Because just like Jesus had to turn around and see the woman he healed, he wants to turn around and see us. He doesn't want to just change our life. He wants to be part of that change. He doesn't want to just heal us. He wants to forgive us. He doesn't want us to just see his back. He wants us to see that he's staring back at us.